So good morning. Yeah, this morning is Tuesday, uh, June the 18th. Yeah, we're hard on as low as Peggy. We're here milking cows again this morning. And it's really hot this week. There's about 70 when we got up. And they're saying it's supposed to get in the mid 90s today, but I think tomorrow or Thursday, there's three or four days here later in the week, it's supposed to be really, really hot. But yeah, we'll try to do the best we can to keep the cows cool and comfortable, and hopefully everything will go well. Sometimes when it gets real, real hot, we can have some issues, with, especially if a cow that is just having a calf, or like this, if they have a calf while it's really hot, especially if they have it in the heat of the afternoon, that can be really hard on them. But yeah, hopefully we have all of our fans running in here this morning. Hopefully this is picking up okay, but we'll see what it sounds like. Here's a cow that's something a little unique or weird, but um, yeah. She's an older cow and has a bigger udder and her teats are a little, were a little lower and longer and she came in one morning and had the one all mangled up and somebody had stepped on it and we pretty much, we had to do something with it, either that or sell her, so we trimmed it up <laughs> and cut off the worst part and yeah, but the interesting thing is now she comes in every milk, and that was probably two months ago, she comes in every milk, and we milk her as a three-quarter cow. But she comes in every milk, and when she lets her milk down, she just screams milk out of that other quarter. So we'll see. Probably once she gets milked off, we'll sell her, like, once she's been milking several months, she's not milking as good. But right now, she's really milking good, so. Anyhow, it's part of life on the farm. I should say this about her yet. Yeah, she is melting very well. And she, um, yeah, we had to do something with it. If we didn't trim it up or clean it up, it would have just got a big infection and then she'd have got sick. We'd had to sell her anyhow. So yeah, it's not something we enjoy doing or have, have, have that it happens, but once in a while things like that happen. Talking about the cow that's missing one, well, you have to see this. He's missing two of them, so you need to tell him why. <laughs> yeah, different times you've probably seen my two fingers that are missing or cut off. Um, yeah, my wife shared a little bit of them there, but um, yeah, it actually happened in two different accidents. The first one, my first finger was whenever I was seven. I was messing with something I shouldn't have been. Okay, we have a, had a joiner there on the end of our table saw. And my dad was doing some stuff with it and he left to go, I think he was getting ready to go, get ready to milk that one afternoon. And uh, it was something he had done to a piece of board. I was thought needed a little something else done to it. And I thought, well, I'll try to do it myself. Well, that didn't work out so well. The, the board kicked and my finger went down into the, into the joiner and there was, yeah, it pretty much just made little slivers out of it. <laughs> Might be kind of gross, but that's what happened. And yeah, we had to go into the doctor. Back then, the medical clinic would do more than they do now. They pulled it down around and trimmed it up and numbed it up, obviously. Then my second one, it happened when I was uh, oh, probably about 23, 23 or 24. Our oldest son was only one, so that had been 28 years ago. It got pinched in the ramp of a cattle truck. And yeah, but the interesting thing was when that one happened, if my first one wouldn't have been missing, it would have went with it the way it got pinched. So but yeah, my first one here, I have the joint and I can use it for a lot of things. My second one, there's no joint on it and it's kind of hard on the end. And yeah, it's, but yeah. When I close my hand, it, yeah, I try to put change in my hand. Yeah, it don't stay in very well, but I can do a lot of other things. I've learned to do a lot of things with my third finger, like picking up a small nut or picking up something small that you gotta have kind of your, use your fingernails or, but yeah, as far as that, I use my first finger for many, many things. Second finger, being it got smashed, it had burst it the whole way open, clear down along the side almost, and it was all, it, it looked disgusting. We had to go into the ER and they operated on that. Had to cut the bone off and yeah there wasn't a whole lot left to it but 
it's yeah it's part of life and things like that happen and do what you got to do and move on whenever i pay for something especially if you go through a drive through and you got to hand the change or your cash or credit card out the window and i always have to use my left hand yeah people see your hand and they want to they want to look at it and they want to try to get a better look at it but they try to yeah they kind of do a double take when they first see it and then they don't they they want to look at it but they don't want you to think they're looking at it so but yeah hey it's not it's not that i'm glad that it happened but it's part of who i am so it's starting to get daylight pretty good we're just about to the longest day of the year i think let me see today's the 18th the 21st i think is the longest day of the year as far as daylight hours but yeah i don't think i ever said anything or showed you any of this but we have our cows won't all fit in the holding area <laughs> our holding area was designed for somewhere around 250 cows we're using milk between 290 and 300 so we have a spot here where we have a couple gates that we close whenever we bring the cows down the milk and then probably room for 40 cows here at least and then once we're got eight or ten lines milk we come one of us comes back and pushes them all down in and there's a gate here we shut so yeah it's not the nicest thing in the world to do but it's not terrible either we're probably just about maxed out with our facility that we have right now so we'll see what the future holds there but um our freestall barn we're probably overcrowded about as much as we should be or want to be and we're just hoping here through this hot spell that everything goes well but we got a lot of fans up there and everything and the alley scrapers it keeps the alley scraped clean so it should be all right but yeah parlor wise yeah it's taken about long enough to milk or as long as i really enjoy milking these cows well, i didn't even realize this till the milkers came off but here we have a line that the whole line except two are line bags. Uh, yeah, all of them except two are line bags in this line over here. But like I said, they're just about all done and ready to go out. But, yeah, over here on this side, there's quite a few line bags too, I guess. I'm just now seeing that. So. Yeah, I was just looking here, out of the 22, there's 11 on a side, out of the 22 that are in here, 19 of them are line bags. That's unusual, but that's the way it is. There's a red and white Holstein sheet. Uh, the rest of these up through here are all line bags. These are the kind of cows that are fun to milk. Here's a cow that's just fresh with her third calf, probably maybe about a month. Just comes in every milk and just packed full of milk. Yeah, for those of you that are farmers, dairy farmers, you know what I'm talking about. But yeah, she's probably right there in that 120, 125 pounds a day, somewhere in that range. But it's easy to milk trouble free and nice cow yeah I probably said this other times but yeah we, we enjoy doing the videos it's uh, my wife does all the editing and yeah between the two of us we both do some of the video and her dog Teddy likes to ride on the back of the gator and we had trimmed our weeping willow trees off and my wife Lois was cleaning them all up and he ain't missing his ride. Times so he'll get up on the seat, but he didn't want on the seat, so she left without him. And this time she came back and he's like, I ain't missing my ride this time. And he's just laying there letting her cover him all up. <laughs> so anyway, it's pretty neat. It's the beginning of a really hot spell for us. Or, yeah, there's supposed to be eight or ten days here. It's 90 and above and four or five of them days is supposed to be... 95 and 99 the actual temperature <laughs> today's not too terrible out here the humidity level is definitely coming up but there's a breeze going so that sure is a plus but yeah today we've had all kinds of stuff happening and we did some maintenance in the milk and parlor changed our milk hoses and changed some gaskets in the milk line and uh, had a few other things happening and we 
start mowing some second cutting hay. We're gonna mow the rest of that down here this afternoon yet and then bail it up tomorrow morning and wrap it. The one field here is maybe not real, real thick or real tall. It's it, Yeah, it's really, really thick, but it's not really tall. But if it gets hot, like they're saying, yeah, it's just gonna wilt and dry up to nothing. So we're gonna go ahead and mow it. We were really hoping Friday, last Friday, there was a chance of some rain. We were really hoping we'd get some, but it never amounted to much here. We uh, got enough to make the road wet two or three times, but north of us got a little bit, but yeah, it missed a lot of areas. Do the best we can and keep praying for rain because right now the corn is not terrible. It's starting to roll it's over the ridges, but it's going to get ugly here. If it gets as hot as they're saying for a week or 10 days and no rain. And about the milk or hoses. These are the hoses right here we changed. We use a silicone, a blue silicone hose. They last a lot longer than rubber. And yeah, but they still start getting like discolored inside from the wash cycles and stuff. So yeah, they like you to change them periodically. So yeah, we got them all changed. And then down here on the milk line, there's a three inch milk line that the hoses all connect to. And and all of these joints where the line comes together, like right here, yeah, there's a gasket in there. And the milk inspector wanted me to replace all them on all the milk line, or yeah, the three inch milk line. And then also the inch and a half line. Here's a filter. We put a filter in this canister that filters any, I mean, we wipe the cows off, make sure they're clean, but then yeah, any little, we always have to have a filter in. Any little bit of dirt down a plaque, but yeah, he wanted me to replace all the uh, gaskets in this inch and a half line here too. There's, there must have been at least 12 or 13 of the three inch ones, and probably close to 15 of the inch and a half between here and where it goes into the milk tank. So the inch and a half ones aren't too terrible bad. The three inch ones are a pain in the neck because when you take them apart, they yeah, you got to pull it apart enough to get the gasket out and get the gasket in there and get everything pulled back together and try to hold it all together and get your clamp back on it. <laughs> but anyhow, we got them all, all done this morning and yeah, we'll say so yep, yeah, we're, I, I don't know, we were here probably working a deck close to two hours till we got everything done and everything, well we did a few other things here in the uh, parlor as well, some other maintenance stuff. So. Heifers up here in what we call our new heifer barn. Uh, it's got a counter slope in there. I don't know if I ever showed any of this or not, but it has a 14 foot scrape alley out here in the front. Then there's about 12 foot there at the back. It slopes probably six, eight inches from the front to the back. And we scrape it out twice a week and put a little bit of sawdust in the first four or five pens. or seven groups in this barn. And we move them into here when they're about three to probably four months old actually yeah probably four four and a half months old and then they're in here till they're getting close to a year old yeah there's usually around 100 in this barn at least 90 to 95 yeah there is one pen in the middle there that we keep a bunch of our young bulls in that's uh too big to still be running with heifers but not big enough to put in with anybody to breed yet
but today we mowed some second cut down. There's some of these fields, the first cut we had some triticale and ryegrass no-tilled into it. And the triticale didn't come back, but the ryegrass did. And then we no-tilled sudex into it after that. And um, yeah, the ryegrass was getting to the stage it needed to get made or it was gonna start getting old on us. Yeah, if you look out through here, there's some spots it's got really good windrows, and then if you're going out over some of the higher, like the higher ridges or whatever in the field, yeah, there's just not a whole lot there. But, but anyway, that's what happens when you it's a little on the dry side. So, but yeah, we'll get this made. We're raking it here this afternoon. We're gonna lay on first thing in the morning and wrap it in. And there's a spot where the triticale the first time must have been down. It's, it's all brown. A few spots in here like that, but luckily it wasn't too many. <laughs> also had two grass hay fields down at the home farm across the road from the, the main buildings that we mowed off. The one field's really, really thick, but there again, the other field has some a higher ridge on it. It's not real thick, but that grass, when it gets hot like this, that stuff will just wilt up and it'll come back some if we get some rain, but we decided to go ahead while we're doing this other field and make what we can get out of it and move on from there. <laughs> 